Hey, what's up everybody? Hey, I've been uh, doing a ton of work with clients over the past few weeks about 2022 and getting ready for 2023 and just thought I'd shoot a quick video to kind of summarize some of the things we talked about and maybe just kind of elaborate on some of these topics um, to maybe help you. You know, because I know for a lot of people, 2022 was was difficult. Maybe it wasn't for you. Maybe you had your best year ever. But I know a lot of folks struggle with 2022 and a lot of people are concerned about 2023 and uh, the difficulty that a lot of these changes may be bringing next year. I think there's also a tremendous amount of opportunity, um, but I understand that there's a lot of people that are maybe, you know, apprehensive about what's going on and um, and what they can do different and how they can be successful in 23. So I just wanted to put a, a quick video and kind of talk through some of these topics, and maybe some of these things will help you. So you know, you're getting out, it's the end of the year, and we're getting ready to to head into 23. So so now what do you do, right? Like what's what's the what's the step? What's the what's the process? What's the what's the thoughts that are, you know, going through everybody's mind? And I think the first thing is, you know, we gotta think about change. And, you know, it's really easy um, to wanna get on one of these groups on Facebook and, and vent and talk about what what changes are being made by the company. Um, and you know what, you, you may be right, right? Like there's a lot of times, you know, you make a really good point about something that's happening and that that's not the right thing to do, whether it's for the customer or for you or whatever. And you, you may be 100% correct in that. Um, I think the problem with, with, with all of that is that there's probably not anything that you're going to do about it, right? In terms of changing their mind, right? So the, you have the, the leaders of the company, you have the investors in the company, you have, um, the people on the street, uh, if it's a publicly held company, you know, like Allstate, you've got all the demands of that. So there's a lot of things, you know, that are, that are affecting those decisions. And it's really easy to kind of get caught down in the, in the weeds on that and be upset about it and, you know, complain and vent. And, and you may be 100% correct in what you're saying. But the, the problem with that is we're not going to change, we're not going to change their mind. However, you can change what you do, right? Like you have full power and control over that. You can change the way you feel about it. You can change the way you think. You can change your attitude. Most importantly, you can change what's going on in your agency. And you have total control over that. So that's the first thing that I would encourage you to do is just think about, you know, look, there's nothing that you can do about the bigger picture. You know, and I'll, I see sometimes comments about, well, let's do this. Let's do that as a, you know, as a group, as an agency force and, Guys, just it's not going to produce any kind of results. The only thing that changes what goes on at, at the at the company level, the corporate level, are results. If if they don't get the results they're getting, then they're going to make another change, and that doesn't always mean they're going to make it in your favor. So we can't worry about that stuff. We got to worry about what what can we change? Like what what's going on in the agency that we can do different going into twenty twenty three? All right. So own everything, right? Take responsibility for everything that happens in that agency. Um, don't blame other people. Don't, don't blame the company, don't blame the economy, the president, you know, the, the leaders in your community, uh, you know, raids, guidelines, underwriters, don't blame anybody else. Own everything and realize that everything that happens in there is, is totally your responsibility and a reflection of what you do every day. And you need to accept that. And don't worry about what other people are doing okay don't don't feel like hey i've got to place blame over here i'm gonna vent about this or i'm gonna you know go online and make a big post look just own it all just take responsibility for everything that happens in there if a hire doesn't work out you know when i when i first started in this business i always thought or i, I tended to think that hey you know what they didn't work out because because they're just not a good person they're not a good employee and i would always blame them and once I realized that, look, I'm the one that hired them. I'm the one that onboarded them. I trained them. I developed them. I held them accountable or didn't. You know, I, I handled all that. Whatever they're doing now is a reflection of, of me. And I think once you start to have that kind of attitude and you look at it that way, man, it just makes things so much easier and so much clearer. And then you can learn from mistakes and you can try to apply what you're learning towards next time. And, and then you start to see progress. Okay. So own it all. If you have a current team now 
And maybe you haven't been doing things the, the way you should have been doing them. And maybe there's some things in there you can improve upon. Um, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. I didn't write that down as a topic, but I think that's something that a lot of times when you're vulnerable with your team, when you explain, hey, you know what, guys, I haven't done the best job with this. I want to do better. My, my, my objective is for all of you to reach your goals. And in order to do that, we've got to do things a little bit differently, and I haven't done a very good job with that, right? You, you can stand up and say something like that in a meeting and own what's going on and be vulnerable while still you know, setting a tone for what's going to happen moving forward. Um, so don't blame other people. Own everything. Own, own it that it's your responsibility. Next, number three, don't compare yourself to others. I know there's a lot of people that will get online, and, I, and I'm proud of them. And, I, and frankly, I did the same thing. You know, you have a big month, and you want to celebrate it, and you want to talk about it, and you, you want to, you know, let everybody know, right? And a lot of times you're doing that because you want to give a shout-out to your team. Um, but sometimes you're just really proud of yourself. You know, you, you accomplish something significant, and you've done something you've never done before, or maybe you're on a really good run, Maybe you're doing really well compared to other people, and you, and you want to talk about that. And I totally understand that, and I, I encourage people, you know, to talk about those things because I think it also inspires folks, right? But don't get online, don't get in these groups, and start reading all that and feel like, man, I'm, you know, I'm a failure because I'm not doing what somebody else is doing. First of all, you have no idea what's really going on in a lot of these offices, and and I say that from personal experience. A lot of times, things look great on the outside and numbers may be met maybe being met but sometimes that doesn't tell the whole picture it doesn't tell you what's going on internally it doesn't tell you you know how much money is being spent to do that but the most important thing is you have no idea sometimes what it took for somebody to get to that point or how long it took or what they had to go through what they had to fight through what kind of adversity they suffered you know we've got a lot of coaches on our staff that work with team, teams all over the country and owners. And look, a lot of those people, they've been through some really tough times, you know. And I went through some pretty tough stuff myself, you know, personally um, and in the business. And most people don't get online and talk about all that, right? You, you, don't, you don't see a lot of that being discussed. Um, if you ever come to one of our events, I try to be as open and transparent, you know, about, about the failures that I've had and the things that we've done incorrectly. Um, but back then when I was going through that, was I getting online and, you know, discussing all that? You know, not not really. And, and I, I, I doubt there's many other people that do, right? So when you see those results, don't look at that and think, man, you know, I'm just, I'm a loser. I'm way behind. I'm not even close. The only exception I would make to that line of thinking, when you see somebody that you know, you're very certain, they're in a very similar position to yourself, right? They've been here about the same amount of time. Maybe the book size is about the same. They've got very similar circumstances, and they are just crushing you. Right? They're doing way better, running circles around you. you know, I think it's okay to look at that and say, you know what? I should better do better. Well, I need to level up. If I've got someone out here that's doing so much better than me in a very similar situation, I, I need to level up. I need to do better. So there's nothing wrong with that. But when you look at these people that are writing all this business and doing all these big things, all these big numbers, and... Um, Try not, try not to compare, because I think it just it creates a lot of problems for yourself. Think, just focus on what you can do, right? Like what, what are you capable of? What's attainable for you? And let, and let's start there. And and you can drill that down to your team members as well. You know, what what are they capable of? Let's let's make sure they're making that happen. Let's make sure they're reaching their full potential. Which brings us to training. You know, obviously that's what we do. Um, and I talk about it all the time. But man, it is. It's a game changer, and, and some people train, but they're not training like they should be training. You know, if you're not truly making sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing, if you're not an integral part of that as an owner, as a leader, and I would ask you to ask yourself, you know, when was the last time that you actually sat down with somebody and really looked at a situation where you could teach them, right? Whether you listened to a call, you looked at a quote, um, you did some role play. When was the last time you did that in a real serious way? Does your team know it's important to you? Is it something that you do consistently? Is it part of your culture? Are you doing it because you truly want people to reach their full potential? And do they know that, right? 
there's a lot of things that go into training that are outside of just, you know, watching videos or reading documents or, you know, even having meetings. You know, if you're having a meeting and the, the meeting is, is nothing more than just communicating information, that, look, that's not accomplishing a whole lot. That, that's just, you know, the meeting should be designed where at the end of the meeting, everybody's better off than they were at the beginning of the meeting. It shouldn't be something that you can just email out, okay? So there's a, there's a lot of structure that needs to be had within your training. And you need to make it serious, and, and, and you need to make sure it's a priority, and your team needs to understand that it's serious and it's a priority for you because that helps establish your culture. It helps establish the identity of you as a leader when you're truly trying to help people get better and you're, and you're doing it for the right reasons. Accountability. I can't talk about this enough. <laughs> I think that a lot of times when we're working with a with an owner, um, especially for the first time, even on an ongoing basis, I had a meeting this morning with an owner about this. Guys, you got to hold people accountable. And when I say people, I mean everybody on the team, including yourself, right? You, you've got to make sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And you can't wait, right? Like I, I have the saying that, Conflict delayed is conflict multiplied. So sometimes I'll talk with somebody and they, well, so-and-so only wrote so much business, you know, for the last couple months, you know, or last month. And I'm like, okay, well, well when, did, when did we bring this up? When did you talk to them about this? You know, like, well, about, you know, the end of the month, we're getting ready to run payroll. And, 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 and that's too late. If, if you're dealing with somebody now, let's say they just started with you and maybe, maybe they came out, you know, Great, right? They're awesome the first month or two, and now they've kind of hit a little bit of a, of a slide. You can't wait to the end of the next month. You got to deal with things now. You got to look at it in the moment. You need to have like a, a shot clock mentality. If I've got a producer and they're not doing what needs to be done, whether it's on a, on a results perspective or production or, or a activity perspective, I'm dealing with it now. I'm not going to wait. So if they go a day, maybe give them a day, and there's nothing that's done. No production, activity's really low. I'm meeting with them first thing. First thing the next morning, we gotta meet with them. We gotta talk about this. And then there needs to be a shot clock mentality. You look at it at 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, end of the day. And some people are like, well, that's micromanaging. You can call it whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> but for most people, your agency is the, is the biggest asset that you own, or, or it probably will be one day. And, you know, I think most people are totally fine with micromanaging their assets. You know, I, I, I'm, I definitely am. So if I've got somebody in there that's not doing what needs to be done, and I have to micromanage them to get the results I'm looking for so that my asset continues to grow, well then that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now you could say, well let's hire people that you know, don't require that. Let's hire people that have initiative. Let's hire people that don't need to be micromanaged. And that, that's great, and, and in a perfect world, that's exactly how it's supposed to work. But I think we all know that's not that's not reality. Reality is you end up with people that you need to be able, you've got to have some accountability to get them where they need to go. You know, it's all about choices and decisions. Sometimes, and I wouldn't even say sometimes, the majority of the time, most people in this country, they are wired to give by, right? Whatever got them through the day, if that got if that got them through the day to their liking and there was no negative consequence, there's a really good chance they're gonna do the exact same thing tomorrow. And again, and again, and again. And then that, now you got a habit, now you got a pattern. You know, then you try to go in there and change that, and that's very difficult. So when you see people making poor choices, poor decisions, you need to deal with that in real time. You don't need to wait. You don't need to wait to the, to the end of the month, even the end of the week. You need to do it in real time. And, and look, there's ways you can do that while showing that you care about them, right? Like if you try to make accountability all about them, if you make it about what's important to them, what are they trying to accomplish? What are their goals? What are their aspirations? And you build everything that you're working on around that, where you're more like an accountability partner to help them accomplish those goals, well then you're much more likely to get the results you're looking for. If it's always about you or about the agency, um, you know, that can be a lot tougher because frankly, they don't really care about that. They care about themselves, just like you care about yourself. You don't really care about the CEO of your company and how much they make. You care about what, what you're going to get, right? You care about your goals. So you got to think about your team the same way. you got to do what's 
what, what's necessary to help them accomplish their goals, okay? Accountability is huge. Remember, guys, you get what you tolerate. If you put up with things in there, when, when you have people in there that are not doing what needs to be done, you know, you're allowing that to happen. You get what you tolerate. A lot of times, the, the easiest way to accomplish things, the, the best way to make change is to change your standards, to change your expectations. And I know, I hear it all the time, well, in this, you know, labor market is so difficult, right? It's so hard to get somebody just to come in for an interview. I understand that. I understand. I totally, totally get it, right? I know it's tough to hire right now. But you either let people just do whatever they want to do and you end up with a very mediocre group that, that lasts forever, right? Like that, that just goes on and on and on. Or you deal with things now. And I, I would rather suffer for a short period of time than for a long period of time. So I'd rather deal with things in the moment and, and understand, yeah, I, I get it. Maybe, I'll, maybe some people will leave. Maybe I'll run them off. Maybe I have to fire them. Maybe I won't ever, maybe I'll never hire them to begin with. I understand all that, you know, is, uh, is part of the deal. But if you don't raise your standards, remember, you get what you tolerate. If you're tolerating it, if something's going on in that office and it's not really to your liking, you're tolerating it, that you, you're going to get what you tolerate. You know, just remember, your agency was perfectly designed to get the exact results you're getting. Think about that for a second. Like the results you're getting today, whatever that is, it was perfectly, it could not have been designed any better. It was designed to get those exact results, 100%. And you designed it, right? So the, the good thing is you can also change that design, right? You can change the way things are being run. You can change that to get the results you're looking for. So anyways, look, I hope this was a little helpful for you, maybe to, to go into 2023 and think about things a little bit different, you know, you can't just keep doing the same old thing. You're just going to keep getting what you got. And frankly, the way things are moving in our industry, a lot of times doing the same old thing will actually get you less than what you were getting before. So there's a ton of opportunity in 2023. There really is. And, you know, it's just a matter of going out there and, and making the most of it. You can have to do some things different. I really believe that, and I think that more changes are coming. I don't, I don't think this is the end. I think there's, there's more changes that are coming. Um, based on the direction of this of this industry, but I think the the Allstate opportunity is by far the best on the street. I deal with all these carriers today, and I think that when you look at the comp plan, when you look at the equity position, the ability to buy and sell, and I know it can be difficult at times. It's still leap years ahead of anybody else out there on the captive side. So make the most of your opportunity. You know, make sure you make it count. And if we can help you, let, it, let us know. Reach out to me anytime. You can message me, um, email me, you know, whatever. I'll be, I'll be glad to help you any way I can. But these are just some really basic fundamental things um, to help you get going into 2023 and help you, help you get where you want to go and be successful at the business and, and realize that there are um, lots of people out there doing the exact same thing every day and they're having a ton of success with it. And I hope you do too. So, anyways... Have a great day, everybody. If I can help you, reach out anytime.